Just go for it! Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Brain Blaze. Today we're talking about how YouTube restoration channels are stupid, and Kevin wrote this for me, the format of the show, if you're new here, I've never read it before, and Kevin was like, what are you talking about? They're stupid? What do you mean? I love the restoration channels. And I'm like, yeah, me too, Kevin. I love the restoration channels like the way I love primitive technology. That was an amazing original YouTube channel where some dude just goes out and builds in the jungle, and then it turns out that all those ones where it's like, I built a secret underground mansion with 700 rooms and 19 swimming pools in two days using my hands. Did you? And it turns out they were all fake. Oh. Apparently, there's loads of fake restoration videos where they mess sh sh up on purpose. And uh, I thought we'd make fun of them today. So that's what we're going to do. It's not about jealousy. <laughs> it's not <laughs> Why do they get millions of views? Hey there. A sad fact that I'm becoming increasingly aware of these days is that a large percentage on YouTube of content on YouTube is either fake or stolen. It's a problem that seems to persist across every genre, and it's disheartening to know just how many people are out there trying to make money from your time by lying to you. And if you want to see, like, uh, I'd never call it stolen because that's legally nebulous. Oh well, I mean it's not nearly legally nebulous. That's the problem. What's the right word? It's like I'm putting myself on the line. There's this dude who's called. QXC? No, that's the shopping channel. QCL? QQ? Fuck. XQC. And he has reaction videos. It's just him watching a video and the only, like, a really popular YouTube video. And the only difference is his little face in the corner being like, it's really stupid. It's very creatively bankrupt. Like, I make jokes about myself being creatively bankrupt and I am. But holy sh, my dude. That's basically, you know, some people might say that that's stealing content it's pretty dodgy it's pretty dodgy if not you know that's just my opinion not a statement of objective fact the weirdest part of this is just how stupid and poorly done a lot of the fake content is i first became aware of this in the world of speed running blissfully unaware at the time that it was a pervasive oh speed running i was thinking about like sports but it's people finishing video games quickly right blissfully unaware that at the time it was a pervasive problem across larger segments of youtube one of the craziest fake speed runs i saw was from a youtuber with millions of subscribers who uploaded the worst fake speed run of super mario bros to ever exist i was actually impressed by how how terrible the video was. To start, the guy in the video never started or stopped a timer. He did not have splits for the different levels. He was also eating pizza in between levels, which is something that would absolutely not happen. The gameplay uploaded was spliced together from different runs, but the YouTuber made a ridiculous mistake by using footage from a tool, Assisted Speedrun, or TAS. A TAS basically lets you record and rewind the game frame by frame to create a perfect set of inputs to create speedruns that are physically impossible for humans to perform. I do understand half those words. I have no idea what you just said, Kevin, but let's <laughs> He cheated, did he? Okay. I just wanted to take a moment in today's video to deliver something important. It's something that affects us all in today's digital age. It's online security and privacy. Oh god, that sounds boring. I know, I know, it does, doesn't it? But it's important. Now imagine you're sipping on your favorite coffee in a quaint cafe. Maybe you're binge watching your favorite show in a hotel halfway across the world. You're having a great time. Right, but hold on a second. Do you know? Is that internet connection safe? <laughs> Are you? Have you visited North Korea? Are you just on their open Wi-Fi? Are you insane? And it's not just North Korea. It's just basically any hotel Wi-Fi. If it's got, if it's not secured, if it's not encrypted, it can be dodgy. Okay, even if it is secure, it can be dodgy. Like you could log on and it's like there's a fake Starbucks and someone's like honey potting. That's what it's called, where they set up like a fake little Wi-Fi and you're like, okay, let's log on. Hello. And you're having a great time. And it's like that. That ain't Starbucks Wi-Fi. That's like hacker John upstairs with his computer pretending to be Star. Oh, look, it's all bad news. How can you stay safe? Well, guess what? Guess what? I've got a solution for you. What a surprise. It's Surfshark VPN. Surfshark VPN is like a digital superhero here to protect your online activity, and today I'm going to tell you how easy it is to use. First things first, Surfshark solves a big problem that we all face, keeping our online activity private and secure, and this is like putting on a mask. With Surfshark, you can connect to popular websites, stay safe on public Wi-Fi, shop online without location-based pricing, which sucks. You know when you're shopping for a flight and it's like, you come back, it's like, why is it more expensive? And they're like, because we know you want it, customer. And you're just like, well, guess what? Screw you. Incognito, open up Surfshark, bada bing, bada boom. It's like having a Swiss army knife for all your online life and all with just one click. With over 3,200 servers in 100 countries, GPS spoofing on Android and a kill switch for ultimate protection, Surfshark has it all. Plus, they never collect your data. Their servers are 100% RAM only, ensuring your privacy. Use the promo code BLAZE 
and that'll give you an incredible three months for free when you sign up at surfshark.deals forward slash blaze remember you got a 30-day money-back guarantee surfshark.deals slash blaze and now back to today's video in this case the fake run opens with a technique that required pressing left and right on the nintendo controller at the same time which the hardware doesn't actually allow from the first second of gameplay it became clear to anybody who was familiar with mario speed running that the run was fake however it still get it still gets millions of views though doesn't it which is nuts i wish there's a way to fake my content <laughs> However, my favorite part of this run was that it also included a heart rate monitor for literally no reason. Throughout the entire run, the guy's heart rate just swapped between 80, 85, and 89 beats per minute. That just wouldn't happen. When somebody is deep into a game on a good pace, their heart rate usually spikes to about 160 or 180 BBM, or at the very least 120. Holy shit, do people really get that excited by playing video games? I like video games. I've got to monitor my heart rate. I really don't think I get that excited. I'm just like... Bah, 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 bah. I, I, I just sit there and I play. It's hysterical to me that this guy would have uploaded a video where his heart rate never actually changed and he must have just included it because he saw that some videos had one. Of course, there's a good chance that everything I just said about Mario speedrunning is new information to you. It is, Kevin! I just, <laughs> I've never seen a video like this in my life. Assuming that it didn't just sound like incoherent nerdy bullshit. You guys just put the word quantum in front of everything? Well, Kevin, I have to say that bit about, well, he uses a TAS system and then he was going back and reframing and I'm like... <laughs> Okay. And that's the entire point, because regardless of how much Simon has complained about the length of this intro, I wasn't going to do it, Kevin, but now you've reminded me. Kevin, get to the bloody story! There is actually a point. Oh, there is, is there, Kevin? Because the point obviously doesn't seem to be getting to the point. Does it, Kevin? Does it, Kevin? It's easy for people who are experts in a topic to spot bullshit, but when a video gets millions of views, it's unlikely that many of the people watching are actually experts. The first time a restoration video popped up in my feed, I thought it was extremely cool, but I also don't know the first thing about restoring World War II Zippo lighters. How would I know whether or not the entire thing was bullshit? Luckily, I'm here to help you avoid falling into that trap. There are lots of channels dedicated to fake restoration videos, and I'm here to help you learn to spot what's real and what's fake. Oh, we're doing a public service, are we, Kevin? You're welcome, world. What can I say except you're welcome? Weak fakes. Okay, there are a few different types of fake restoration videos out there, and weak fakes are by far the least egregious. These are videos where somebody takes a perfectly good object and deliberately damages it so that they can make a restoration video. That's no way to treat an expensive musical instrument! Wait, that's when I came up with this idea. That was the whole, that's all I thought it was. <laughs> They'll lie about where it was found and the damage will be realistic, but the damage will also be real. This is exceptionally easy to do with metal objects because you can make items rust very quickly using things like white vinegar or hydrogen peroxides, and a brand new item can be made to look like a rusty old piece of shit in under a day. Really? I had no idea, and that's kind of cool. Hey! While they're still lying to you, it's not quite as bad because the restoration process will be genuine. Oh wait, are people actually getting old stuff and being like, look at this old, like, I don't know, look at this old laptop I found that's completely f***ed up. And then they're just buying a new one and being like, I restored it. I didn't even realize that was a thing. I thought it was people just breaking shit on purpose. If you ever wanted to try restoring old objects yourself, you can still learn some things from these channels. But that also means that these channels can be a lot harder to spot. On a real restoration channel, there'll be some sort of narration, even if it's only in the text form, to explain the entire process. They will tell you what chemicals are being used and in what concentration, what tools are being used if it isn't something basic like a screwdriver, and so on and so forth. They'll even go as far as to show you what parts are being replaced entirely, often because a replacement part costs 50 cents and fixing the old broken part would take hours. Weak fake videos will do a lot of the same stuff, so like I said, you can still learn something from them. However, there are still ways to tell if the item has been deliberately damaged for the purposes of making the video. Rusting metal is easy, but it's more difficult to make wood appear to show the same level of weathering that the metal pieces have. One common trick is to just take a blowtorch and char the wood. That help makes it look old and damaged, but that's not a natural result of weathering, unless it actually happened to survive a forest fire that is. If the wood looks charred and blackened rather than just really old and worn down, then it's most likely fake. Another common trick is to have an object partially disassembled, especially for the thumbnail. This makes something look like it's in far worse condition than it really is, and those thumbnails are key indeed. <laughs> this video's probably got a thumbnail like that in it as its own thumbnail, because even though we're making fun of it, you probably clicked on it because of the thumbnail. Hello there, friends. Thanks for staying around so long. 
seven minutes in, are we, Kevin? <laughs> that introduction really was bloody long, wasn't it? That's just the way we like to keep it, Captain. Showing either a side-by-side -side of the damaged and renovated objects, or just an object that looks like it's beyond salvage, as the thumbnail is important for getting clicks, and videos in this genre routinely get millions or tens of millions of views. I'm not jealous at all! Hey there. One YouTuber dedicated to only making genuine restoration videos even admitted to chemically rusting part of an object on a single occasion to get a better thumbnail. Lies. Oh, lies. It's okay. The thumbnail's just there to get the click. I can't be critical of that because, well, look at my thumbnails. In addition to the wood, another good way to spot a weak fake is by simply considering what the item actually is. Weapon restoration videos are particularly popular, so let's use guns as an example. Throughout Europe, the majority of old guns that people are going to find in need of restoration will be from World War II. Not only does it take a lot of time for a piece of metal to naturally rust and decay to the point of being worthy of a YouTube thumbnail, but guns are much more tightly controlled. Now, if a video has a thumbnail of a desert eagle that looks like it spent the last two years at the bottom of the ocean, well, it's gonna be fake. The Desert Eagle only began to be manufactured in 1982, and I certainly hope that nobody lost theirs on day one. If the object in question is no more than 40 years old, but the thumbnail looks like it's been buried in the ground for at least twice that long, I'd recommend being highly skeptical of those videos. So, if it's something that isn't old enough to be as damaged as portrayed, why would somebody bother to fake it? And yes, Simon, the answer is obviously money! But allow me to at least quantify it for you. People love restoration videos, but they also love things that they've heard of. If you search for Colt M1911 restoration videos, the top result has almost 9 million views. Really? Now that's pretty good, but unless you <laughs> it's a really it's pretty, it's pretty bloody good. <laughs> I don't think I've got many videos with over 9 million views, Kevster. You're jealous. Uh, but unless you're either a big fan of guns or history, you probably don't know what that gun is. Well, isn't it one of the most famous guns of all time? I'm pretty sure I know what the Colt M1911 is. I think I've made, even made a video about it. On the other hand, if you search for Desert Eagle Rare, I definitely know what Desert Eagle Restoration is, because that's in like video games, because it's fing massive. The top result has 30 million views, and yes, that video is this style of fake. One last thing you can look for is to try and identify weak fake videos by evidence of chemical rusting. Because some chemical solution was used to force the metal to rust, this is usually leaving behind a residue. It would look like some weird coating that gives the rusted metal a little more of a sheen than it would normally have. It's not the easiest thing to spot, especially depending on the lighting, but it is an option. Straight Strong fakes. Okay, here we go. This is where people are really faking the shit, isn't it? Unlike weak fake restorations, there's absolutely nothing to learn from strong fakes other than how gullible people are. And again, this is one of those ones where it's like, I, I mentioned this, it must have been in a brain blaze that I recorded like yesterday or a couple of days ago, where it's like, you're on a video on YouTube and it just seems really stupid, but it has millions of views. And it's not particularly content focused towards children or something like that. And you're like, what's up? Why? What's going on here? And it is children. Children are watching that video en masse. That's because children are stupid. I mean, children and people with brains like children. Because that there's, there's loads of them on YouTube and they just watch it. The previous videos we talked about usually require some amount of expertise to recognize as being fake. And like I said, you can still learn something from them. Strong fakes require a little more than basic observation skills and a middle school education to identify as fake, but they're also much funnier. Yeah, middle school education. So anyone below middle school is watching these. And you know what? There's a lot of people with a lot of time to spend on YouTube who are not haven't finished middle school yet. I have no idea what age middle school is, but whatever age that is and younger, they're all watching it. The formula is the same in every video, at least across all the different fake channels that I found. It always opens with some Asian dude wearing a rice hat, wandering around, and for some reason he always has a person following him with a camera. What a coincidence. Yeah, these is I think this is the videos like I saw that really made me think, let's let's let's, you know, ride this hard. Yeah, you are because it's bullshit. And they're like, oh my God, I found this watch in this like mud. And it's this, uh, I think the one I saw is like supposed to be some fancy watch, but it was clearly fake. <laughs> it's like, okay. Usually I'll be walking down a road and encounter a giant pile of trash that has been dumped alongside the road by some inconsiderate douchebags. While being filmed, the person will appear to examine the pile of trash, looking for something that they can restore for YouTube, but they're never looking that hard. They might kick the pile a little bit or poke it with a stick, but nothing is given any real consideration. The person may be even carrying with them a bag, but the bag 
bag doesn't get filled. There's no moment where they stop to examine an item and think, hmm, would this make a good YouTube video? They know it won't because they know everything in the pile is actual trash other than the item that they secretly planted there. Invariably, and within seconds of beginning to look in the garbage pile, the restorer will quickly discover their golden opportunity. What they find depends on what the channel's name is. If the channel is called We Restore Watches, then every garbage pile they encounter will miraculously have a watch in desperate need of restoration. <laughs> Middle school and lower, everybody. Remember that. If you've fallen for these videos, you're a little dim. If the channel focuses on video game systems, they'll find a Nintendo 3DS. There's no limit to what can be found, with some videos showing people finding an entire motorcycle or a rusted out M16 rifle. You know, because people often throw their M16s into the local garbage pile. <laughs> these videos. So stupid! These videos will then cut back to the supposed workshop where the alleged restoration is taking place. There will never be any sort of narration or explanation given in these videos because there is nothing to learn from them. They have no idea how to restore anything, and if you tried what they will do, it would absolutely destroy the object. But once they found the item, this is when things get really entertaining just because of how truly fake they are. No matter what object is being restored, it will be 100% covered in rust. We're restoring a banana! <laughs> First of all, remove the rust. Every single inch of the item will be rusted out, regardless of whether or not that makes any logical sense. If they found a motorcycle, the rubber tires are going to be covered in rust. If they found a Game Boy, the plastic casing will be covered in rust. And you don't even need to look at that carefully to notice all of the brush strokes that exist within the rust, almost as if that rust was painted on. What? Never. Why would they lie? What would they have to gain? <laughs> Not everything is quite as obvious as plastic or rubber that has somehow rusted, though. Sometimes the object will be entirely metal, meaning that you need a little bit of extra knowledge, a little bit of a big brain, in order to tell how blatantly fake they are. If you've ever seen the Statue of Liberty, you're likely aware that the patina on a metal can be a bright green color. However, this is not true of all metals. It's honestly really just copper. It does happen with bronze and brass as well, but only because they are metal alloys that contain copper. The rust on a gun or sword made out of steel should be some combination of brown and red, not blue, not green, not yellow. Also, if the gun has a wooden handle, that obviously shouldn't be rusty. <laughs> it's like the rusty banana. It's not real. It can't hurt you. In these videos, it probably will be, but it shouldn't be. It's also common for the tops of screws to appear completely rusted, yet the threads will be pristine as if they were manufactured that very day. And if the item in question had been exposed to the elements in a lake or something, some amount of water should have gotten underneath the head of the screw, where it would then be trapped, causing the entire screw to rust. In these strong fake videos, the process of restoration is never explained because there is nothing to explain. All they're doing is removing the paint that they covered the item in using a combination of mysterious chemicals and creams that would defy reality if it was actually rusted. These magical cleaning agents are so strong that what looks like decades worth of rust can be removed with literally zero effort. But some of these videos go a step further than faking restorations by painting items to look rusted. Some of these are destruction videos that are being shown in reverse. Oh shit, that's clever. Oh shit, I see. I see. I get the picture. This mostly comes up when dealing with electronics. A lot of fake restorations of electronics involve taking a broken piece of equipment, cover it in diarrhea paint to make it look like it's been at the bottom of a lake, pretending to clean it, then replacing everything with cheap aftermarket parts. Unless you're deeply familiar with the inner workings of the electronics, you might not notice that they're using third-party replacements, but I assure you that this is happening. However, sometimes that's either not interesting enough or well beyond the skill set of the person making the video. In that case, they just take a perfectly good item and destroy it. Allow me to walk you through how the process works. A man buys a cheap, used Nintendo 3DS in working condition. He first films himself turning on the device and showing that it works. Next, he disassembles the entire thing, then films himself reassembling it. The reassembly videos can often be painful to watch, as the person may actually be destroying electrical components while putting it back together. But it doesn't matter at this point. After filming, they take it apart again, paint it to look like it has suffered some extreme damage, and then put it back together. They may even go a step further and break the screens. During this process, they also might lose pieces. This is a particularly fu language. This is particularly funny when those pieces later reappear during the final restoration. Once the system is fully destroyed, they go plant it at a location and film themselves finding it. Then they bring it back home, disassemble it, and clean everything. This cleaning process can also be very destructive, as it usually involves cleaning the motherboard with soap and water. 
which is just not something you really want to be doing. And I hope I don't need to tell anybody this, but don't clean circuit boards with soap. No, you don't, Kevin. Look, I know nothing about circuit boards. I know nothing about cleaning. But I know that I don't go into my computer and be like, oh, it's a little bit dusty in there. <laughs> Get that bucket and mop and just go for it! No, no one does that. Don't do that. It's a bad idea. You can technically use distilled water, but your best bet is isopropyl alcohol. I even know that for some reason. Anyway, the next step after cleaning the paint off of everything is to simply throw it in the trash because, well, that's what it is. The video will then be edited and reordered so that everything looks just about right. You can see them find the item, take it apart and clean it, put it back together, and then turn it on. But it's very clear that that's not the order that things happened in. There's a dead giveaway in a lot of these videos, and the people involved have no idea idea because it's not like they have any idea what the f they're actually doing. Circuit boards tend to have a humidity indicator on them. Theoretically, they exist to help diagnose problems, but really, they only exist to void your warranty. They come in different forms, but it's often a little white pad with red dots that turn the white part pink when exposed to water. If you watch one of these electronics restoration videos, even if the device looks like it was buried at the bottom of a lake for years, these indicators will never have been tripped. It will look brand new, showing that it was not exposed to moisture. When they show themselves cleaning the circuit board, it will trip and turn pink. And yet, when all those parts are laid out to be put back together again, the indicator will have magically turned back to white. Oh, shit. Busted. Almost as if it was filmed beforehand. But for all the stupid things these fake restoration channels do, there is one thing that is by far my favorite. Let's go, Kevin. What is it? It turns out that literally everything can be fixed with ramen noodles. Really? I have not seen this one. People will break sinks, bowls, the case on a Game Boy, whatever you can think of, then during the fake restoration, the holes are plugged using crushed up ramen noodles and super glue. If you don't have any ramen, in a pinch you can always use flour and glue instead. What, some sort of cement? Surely that doesn't work, that's obviously nonsense. Fill that cavity with something. In this instance, it's cocaine. This obviously doesn't work. Oh, thank God, if it did work, I'd be like, oh, wow, <laughs> okay. But it's hysterical that anybody would believe it's possible. And since things are being filmed in reverse, all they have to do is put a little patch of super glue over the part they intend to break in the future to make you believe that what you're seeing is fixed and that the sanded down version they have is filled with ramen. A not so victimless crime. Now, at this point, you might be saying, <laughs> Who cares if they're fake, Simon? I just like watching them. And to a certain extent, well, that's true. Enjoy. The danger obviously comes from people trying to recreate the process by themselves and breaking all of their shit. Easy. Easy. Hmm. I'm gonna need a bigger drill. But the strong fake videos don't actually say what they're doing, and the weak fake videos use genuine restoration techniques. Besides, movies are marketed as based on a true story all the time, despite being total bullshit. So are these videos really any different? Yeah, a little bit, because it would be like a documentary. It would be like, yeah, no, it's a documentary. And it just being totally made up. They're aesthetically pleasing to watch and not causing any real harm, right? Well, the videos we've talked about so far aren't causing any real harm, but there is a third type of restoration video I saved until the end to ruin your day. <laughs> You're too kind. Okie dokie. Thanks, Kevin. Let's see where this goes. People love restoration videos and people love animal rescue videos, so why not combine them and create animal restoration videos? No, you fucking didn't. These specifically focus on removing barnacles from turtles, a genuine problem that sea turtles encounter. This is gonna be bad. But YouTube was inundated with fake videos in which people glued barnacles and seashells to freshwater turtles just to cut them off, reusing the same turtles over and over again. Nope. Not only can this be painful to the turtles, as they have nerve endings in their shells, but if they are soft shell turtles, it can essentially rip their skin off, hurting them and causing the risk of infection. Fuck you. Who's doing this? This is horrible. Fortunately, there is a dedicated community of people combating the turtle restoration videos. But there's so much ad revenue up for grabs that these videos just keep coming back. I guess the lesson that can be learned from all of this is that you should just assume everything on YouTube is a lie. I bet Simon's not even really bald. Sadly, I am. Maybe someone could remove the barnacles from my head. Thanks for being here. DOES IT, KEVIN?!